Getting to know your strengths and weaknesses. When we think of a successful person, we often picture somebody who is very confident and capable. However, we often don't stop to think about how they got that way. Sure, it seems at least in mainstream portrayals of successful men and women that many successful people are full of themselves. So it seems hard to believe that they will be able to do the type of introspection that this step is going to require. If somebody already believes that they are perfect, then they are unlikely to believe that there is any room for improvement. However, there is always room for improvement, and the person who is willing to see that and acknowledge it and work on those steps that need to be taken in order to improve are the most likely to get somewhere. If you don't believe that you have any weaknesses that might get in the way of achieving your goals, that itself is a weakness. That type of thinking can backfire when it comes to your plans. Nobody is infallible. And the more willing we are to accept that, the more likely we are to succeed. That doesn't mean that you have to go around telling everybody about how you are bad at this or that and giving the impression that you lack confidence. As a matter of fact, a lot of this process is going to be personal to you. And it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily share every step of the way with your friends and family and co-workers. Actually, it's fine if you don't. Just as long as you're finding some way to be held accountable to your actions and face your weaknesses head on. By being able to look inward and realize that maybe perseverance isn't your strong suit, or maybe you need to work more on self-discipline, you are actually giving yourself a new goal that will help you to achieve the bigger goal. We can call these little goals support goals. A support goal can help you to become the person that you need to be in order to actually achieve the success that you are envisioning for yourself and your plan. Without these little support goals along the way, then your likelihood of success dwindles. But if you are willing to take the time for introspection, you will discover that these support goals will help you to stay on track. Introspection is relatively simple. Sometimes all it takes is listening to feedback about your behaviors objectively. This can be difficult for all of us. We don't like hearing from other people that there are ways that we are lacking. So maybe try looking inward first. Think about the ways you know that you could be better. And yet, you still have not found the time to improve in those ways. Maybe you don't know how. Only you are going to be able to determine what your true weaknesses and your true strengths are. Once you have identified those, there are thousands upon thousands of resources, from websites to self-help books, that can help you to learn how to cope with your weaknesses and become a more well-rounded person that is truly capable of achieving your goals. Many of us even have childhood trauma that can get in the way of our success. If we are raised to believe that we are not capable of succeeding, or that maybe we are not smart enough to succeed, then we are probably going to take it on the authority of the figures that have discouraged or traumatized us. Many traumatized people are self-sabotaging, and it can be extremely useful to get yourself into some sort of therapy or support program if you suspect that maybe you have childhood trauma or trauma even in adulthood that may be preventing you from living the life that you want to live. Step 2 it doesn't have to be discouraging and thinking about the ways that we are lacking, however. There are also essential reasons that we need to focus on the ways that we are strong. Those strengths are going to be inherent aspects of our personalities and constitutions that provide us with the support and motivation that we need in order to succeed. Sometimes it can be just as difficult to discover what our strengths are as it is to think about our weaknesses. A lot of us are often down on ourselves and only find self-worth through the validation of others. However, there is a terrible way to live, and the self-made person is one who can validate him or herself without having to rely on the opinions or perceptions of others. It is good to be confident. There is nothing wrong with that. In fact, most people believe that if you are too aware of your strengths, it can lead to a swollen ego and a big head that makes it hard for you to relate to other people and to see your own faults. However, actually knowing your faults and taking the steps that you need in order to turn them into strengths is a great way to help you build your confidence and start to feel okay with those icky parts of yourself that may make you feel uncomfortable and insecure. Think about what you are good at. What do people compliment you for the most? How many ways can you think of that you have developed skills that can be utilized in your process of planning for success? There are bound to be many ways and many talents that you have, whether they are discovered yet or not. If you aren't sure, you can ask a trusted friend or family member to try and help you to discover what it is that you have that other people may not. Make sure that they know that you are not fishing for compliments, because this can drive people away. Instead, ensure that they realize that you are simply trying to figure out a way to put your best foot forward. 
you will both be glad that you had the conversation, and you are going to be that much closer to planning for your success. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.